السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته والحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وثنك الله سبحانه وتعالى إن دي أفتا وسن الدرود شريف أبو نحب صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك أحب يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم we we thank and we we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity alhamdulillah we are on our iftar transmission day 18 right let me see ji alhamdulillah so we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his uh, blessings for blessing us in this uh, ramadan tw- day 12 and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless each and everyone and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting inshallah uh, as normal I ask you please do share with your friends and families inshallah this program and I'm sure inshallah it's going to be beneficial and at the same time I'm sure you're going to gain also the merits and the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you sharing to your friends inshallah and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless each and everyone who has been supporting and watching us and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our mistakes and, uh, and guide us to the straight path inshallah. Today's program inshallah I will speak about regarding, uh, today's topic is going to be regarding the questions which are being asked in this, uh, in this Ramadan. The questions we, today we are going to be discussing and inshallah from today until maybe in the next uh, three or four days I'm going to only be sharing on what are the answers which people they normally ask in this Ramadan. And normally people they ask this kind of questions, uh, can I have an injection while I'm fasting? Can I have an injection while I'm fasting or will it nullify my fasting? Is having an injection right now we understand there is COVID and people have to take vaccine. Sometimes we you know the elders, the seniors, they will first they have to take the vaccine. Okay, maybe you are uh, someone who is it's a must mandatory for you to take a vaccine and you are fasting. Do you allow to take the vaccine? I, I, I or you have to wait until the end of Ramadan. Or is it if once you take the vaccine out of maybe it's mandatory at your work, is it then is it gonna break your fasting? Is it nullif- is it gonna nullify your fasting? What's going to be the ruling regarding that? So firstly, it is allowed to have an injection. No matter it's, it's this vaccine or in any injection, you're allowed in, when you're in the state of fasting. You're allowed to take a vaccine when you are in the state of, fast, uh, in the, in the state of fasting. Injections that are done to administer the medicine or vaccinations into the body whether it is through the veins or through the muscles, you still allow to do that and it won't break your fasting, inshallah. As it was stated in, in, Fatawa, in, in, in Fatawa Muft Azam, he said, the fast does not, break, uh, does not break by an injection. Your fasting will not be broken by taking the injection. Even if you are, if you are going to take the vaccination, it won't be broken because the medicine does not reach your stomach. The medicine goes through the veins. It doesn't go through to the stomach. Because of that, then it won't be, your fasting won't be broken. At the same time, it is stated also in, in Fatawa, Fakihe, Fakihe Millat. It says that by receiving an, an injection, the fast will not break, whether it is through the veins or through the muscles. Your, the, your, your, your fast will not be broken, inshallah. And likewise, it is said in, in, in Fakihe Millat, Mufjal Din Ahmad Al Amjadi, he said, The research is that the fast will not break by receiving an injection, whether it's through the veins or through the muscles, then it won't break your fast, inshallah. Because besides the intercourse and its, and its likes, the only thing that breaks the fast are medicine. The only thing that will break the, the fast is the medicine which you put in your mouth, which it will go straight to the stomach. 
that one will break. But otherwise, if it's just something as injection, vaccine, then it won't break our fasting, inshallah. That is one of the questions which uh, people, they are normally asking regarding. And also another question which normally people are asking out is, is taking, you know, brushing our teeth with, with, um, with the toothpaste, will that also break our fasting? Because end of the day, you are working with other people. You're interacting with the other people. You need to keep your, your mouth with a good smell. Most of them, if it's a Muslim, you can understand that, okay, my friend is fasting. But most of the people, they're not Muslims in your, uh, in your work. So what's going to be the stage uh, while you're fasting? Will it break your fasting by you using the toothpaste? So the answer, inshallah, will be that for a person to use the toothpaste, it won't break the fasting. As far as you are having the intention of not having the taste of the toothpaste. And it was mentioned by uh, Imam Ahmed in his Fadaw, in his Fadaw as we, he said that in those times there, there was no this toothpaste and all that. So he said to use uh, the tooth powder, it is allowed. To use the tooth powder, it is allowed. So we can use the toothpaste as long as that, that taste of it is not going to our throat. As long as that taste of, of it is not going to our throat, then inshallah we can use also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he likes things to be in a good smell inshallah. Of course that smell which, is, which, which comes out of the mouth of the person is not good, but that will be as a fragrance of Jannah inshallah. So there is no worry in that, but then if you are in the, in the environment where you, you are working, you have to keep your mouth in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a good smell, then to use the toothpaste, as long as that test you won't go into your throat, then that won't be any harm, inshallah. Another question which normally people ask, you know, what are the boundaries of interaction between a husband and a wife while they are fasting? Because normally, normally you are a human being, you are married. So what will be the boundaries? What is the limit for a person who is married, what is the boundary? How can he interact with the wife? How can she interact with the husband? Can we kiss? What kind of kiss can we have? Can we hug? Can we hug each other? What kind of hug can we have? Can our private parts touch each other? What kind? How? So these are also some of the questions, inshallah, uh, which we are going to discuss, inshallah. So, for example, for the married couple, what is the boundary? So, it was stated that the boundary for them is you can have a kiss, you can have a hug. As far as you know that this kiss I'm having, it won't cause any ejaculation. As far as you can kiss your, your, your wife, your, your husband, in a such way that you know you won't have that any feeling in your heart. But it was also said that the kissing of the tongue, where you can suck the tongue, that kind of kissing, it, it's, not, it's not allowed. So we are allowed to kiss our wives, we are allowed to kiss our husbands, but in a such way that it won't cause any harm, it won't cause ejaculation, where you, 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 be, you become high. So it was said that وَمَسُّ وَمُعَانَكَ وَمُبَاشَرَ فَاحِشَدًا إِنْ لَمْ يَأْمَنُوا وَكُرِهَ قَلْبُ قُلْبَةً الْمُفْسِدَ وَإِنْ أَمِنَ لَا بَاسَ ظَاهِرًا أَنْ لَوْ أَنَّ الْأُولَ عَدَمُهَا So kissing is disliked. Kissing is disliked. It is just something which is disliked. And touching, hugging, and the coming together of each other's private parts if one does not feel safe from the annulment of the fast, so if you're not feeling safe, if you're going to be hugging each other and then you feel safe that, you know what, I might get high or I might get at at attracted or somehow my mind, my mind might change, then it's going to be disliked. If you're going to kiss your wife, if you're going to kiss your husband, and in a such way that it might turn around, it, it might not become as normal, 
then that will be as disliked. It, it, it might nullify your fast and then you will have to avoid that, inshallah. This, was, this is found, this fatawa is found in uh, Raddul Mukhtar. Raddul Mukhtar. So it is disliked to kiss. It is disliked to kiss. But if you want to kiss, you can kiss as long as you don't have any shahwa, any desires. You won't have that kind of feeling. Or it won't cause you to, to ejaculate. It won't cause any ejaculation. Then that will be, inshallah, allowed, inshallah. It was also narrated in Raddul Mukhtar. It is said that, أمنا أو لا قال في النهر وكذا المباشرة الفاحشة في الظاهرة الرواية that the passionate kiss the passionate kiss in which the husband process in which the husband kisses right that that passionate kiss in which the husband is kissing you know the chewing of the of the tongue you chew, you chew uh, your wife with the tongue that kind of kiss is the one which is disliked or maybe the, the chewing of the of the lips so you chew, you, you chew your, your, your wife's your lips you chewing her lips or you chewing his lips that kind of a kiss that passionate kiss whether it is safe or not safe but still it is disliked so in this ramadan the limit of kissing you can kiss on forehead you can kiss just a little bit of, of the lips but as far as the, you know that you are safe it don't cause any feeling in your heart but if you know that if I kiss like this, then it might cause, it, it might get me high, or it might change me, my, my, my thinking, my desires might come, then that will be, we'll have to avoid that, inshallah, and that might cause some other problems, inshallah. In an nahar the author said, and it's similar, the coming together of the private parts according to the apparent opinion in the madhab. So for example, if the coming together of, of two private parts, if they're going to touch each other, coming together of the private parts, that will also be disliked. As far as you know it might cause some other problems, then we'll have to avoid, we'll have to, to leave it out. So, it was also stated that in Baharesha, yeah, that to kiss, hug, or touch the board of one's wife in the state of, of fasting is makruh. To kiss, to touch. This is from Bahari Sharia. To kiss, to touch, or to hug a, a, a wife's body. It is makruh. In, while you are fasting. This is only when you are fasting. At night, when you have, you have done your iftar, then you are allowed to do all that, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the Quran. Hunna libasu wa kumantu milibasu la hunna. That them, they are your clothes. Your blanket. And you are, you, are, you are the blanket on them. Meaning you can have the mubashara with them at night. But when we are fasting, it is, it is makruh, it is disliked for us to hug, to touch the body or to kiss, to kiss a woman while we are fasting. This is from Bahare Shariat. So it is makruh when there is a fear of seminal discharge. When you feel like your sperms might come out, then that might become makruh. And also, falling into intercourse, when you feel like you might fall into sexual intercourse, then that also might be as makruh for you to do that. So if you, might, you feel like, okay, I might kiss her, or I might hug her, but then the feeling of it might end up of you falling into intercourse, then it becomes makruh. This has been stated in, this has been stated in, in Bahare Sharia that it is makruh to do so. So we can do the hugging, the kissing, but as far as you think, you feel you are safe and it won't cause you any problem. But also the kissing, it, might, it mustn't be the, the chewing of the lips. Then yes, kiss a normal kiss, you know, the public kiss, the one we know, the, the simple one, the basic one, but not the one which you chew, this, you chew someone's lips the one which you chew someone's tongue and all that, then that all, we cannot do that. We can do that later after we break our fasting, inshallah. And also another question which normally people, they ask, is that, uh, 
Should women who are on their periods, should women who are on their periods, can, can they eat publicly or they, can, they should eat pri uh, privately during the Ramadan? The women who are in periods, should they eat publicly or they should eat privately during the Ramadan? So let's say, let's say for example, you are working or you are at home. Let's, say, let's just say you are at home. Now you are in periods. Now in this case, should you eat private? Should you eat privately or you should eat publicly? It's fine. So you know we have our sisters, and this is normal for everyone. It's it's just clear for everyone that we have, we we surely have our sisters, our our, our aunties, our co-workers. What should, what should they do? We, they know they're at work. Okay, we can say for those who are at home, they can wait and all that. But then for those who are at work, what should they do? Then, then it, was, it was mentioned that in Jawhara, it was mentioned that So, should a woman in her menstrual or in her circle, while she is in haith or she is in nifas, she is in her period. She should he eat. Uh, yeah, she should he eat privately or publicly. It was said that sh uh, she should eat openly because it is not compulsory for her to imitate those who are fasting. So she can eat publicly because it is not compulsory for her for her to imitate those who are fasting. This was mentioned in Al, Al Jawari. The woman who is fasting, uh, who, the woman who is in period, or she is in, uh, she is in her nifas, she is allowed to eat publicly because she is not, it is not compulsory for her to imitate those who are fasting. And it is also mentioned in Bahare Sharia that the woman who is in her menstruation period or she is in her postpartum period, has the authority to eat and drink either openly or secretly. This is from Bahre Sharia. That that woman is allowed to eat publicly or secretly. That's, her, that's upon her, whatever she wants. This is from Bahre Sharia. So a woman has the entire freedom, has the entire authority in her hands that she can eat publicly or she can eat secretly as long as it's in the month of Ramadan. So it doesn't matter. Whatever the case the woman will do, that's it's fine. Another question which normally people they ask is that does backbiting or swearing invalidate the fasting during Ramadan? Does the backbiting or the swearing someone does it nullify a fast? Again, the question says, does, because you know people in today's time, they can't keep their tongue shut. Every time we want to swear, every time we want to backbite people, of course it's haram. Not allowed, yes. It's not allowed. But in this case, does it nullify the fast? If you are fasting and you have backbited someone, or you have sweared someone, is your fasting broken? Or is it it's still allowed? Is it still valid? So it, it was said that min riba wa in kuriha lam yuftira. That the fast is not invalidated due to the backbiting. The fast it is not invalidated due to backbiting, but it becomes makruh. So if you are going to do it now and then, today, tomorrow, if you're going to be backbiting people today and tomorrow, then you should know that your fasting will be broken, will be nullified. If you're going to be swearing now and then, now and then, while you're fasting, then you should know that your Ramadan is inval invalid. So it's, it doesn't, at the first time, if you're going to swear someone at the, at the first, at the beginning, you backbite someone now. It won't be haram, it won't, it won't nullify your fasting. It won't invalidate your fasting, but 
it will be makruh for you. And makruh becomes haram after it has been done after three times. So we will have also to avoid when it comes to backbiting and when it comes to swearing people. The hadith says that backbiting is a, is a greater sin than the fornication. The backbiting is a graver sin than the fornication. It has also been likened to eating the dead meat. So for a person who is backbiting, it's like he is eating the dead meat of one his own brother. And at the same time, a hadith mentions that a dreadful incident regarding backbiting done during the fasting, it is as follows. The messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once ordered his companions to fast and he said, none of you shall end the fast until I grant you the permission to do so. The Prophet is saying, none of you must, must break your fast until I give you the permission to break your fast. And they fasted. And in the evening, when they came to the Prophet Muhammad, they asked for the permission to end their fast. And he granted them the permission to do so. A companion came to him and he said, Oh, Master of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh, Master, there are two young girls. There are two young girls from my family who are fasting. There are two young girls from my family who are fasting. Grant them the permission to end their fasting, Ya, ya Rasulullah sallam. The messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he turned his face. He turned his blessed face. And he pleaded three times. He said, Ma, ma wa kaifa sama man dalla ya man nas. He turned his, his face. He said, they, no, they did not fast. He turned his face. And he said, no, they did not fast. How can they fast if they are backbiting? How can they fast? Man, man dalla ya man nas. He said, how can a fasting person be backbiting? Idhab, he says, he's saying the companion, you, go back. Idhab, fam ruha, fam ruha, command her, an kanat an kanata, swa imatain, an yaskiha. That you must go tell them that if they are fasting, then they must, they must break their fasting. Their fasting is broken. Why was it so? It was because they were backbiting. So backbiting in Ramadan, backbiting in Ramadan, it is, of course, as, as we know, the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, has likened it as eating someone's dead body, right? But at the same time, backbiting in Ramadan, it is disliked. And if it is done continuously, then it nullifies their fasting. So we need also, inshallah, to try and avoid the backbiting. Lau matat wahuma fihima la kaltum hanar. It is said that by the one in whose power is my soul, if this would have remained in their beliefs, then hellfire would have eaten them. Meaning that if these women were still backbiting, then the hellfire would have eaten them. Meaning that we should really avoid. Uh, the backbiting, especially in this month of Ramadan, the swearing of, of other people in this month of Ramadan. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this, uh, this tra tra transmission beneficial to people, inshallah. And for the next, inshallah, two days, we are going to be sharing these kind of questions which normally people they ask in this month of Ramadan. As we have discussed, first we have discussed regarding the using of toothpaste in Ramadan. Is it allowed? And the answer is... Yes, we can use to the toothpaste as long as the taste of the toothpaste doesn't come to our throat. Can we use the, the, the can we vac can we vaccinate ourselves or can we inject ourselves? Yes, we are allowed to do that because the, the, the injection does not go to the stomach, but it will go to our veins. That that doesn't matter if the injection is through the veins or the, the injection is through the muscles. The other the other the other thing is what is the boundary regarding the women, uh, regarding the couple who are married? What is their boundary in, the, in their family? Can they hug, can they kiss, can they touch each other? Can their private parts touch each other? Yes, they are allowed to do so as long as they feel safe. As long as it does not 
cause any ejaculation. But if it's going to cause any problem, if it's going to cause them to become high, then it is, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, advisable for them to avoid that. And also in the kissing, the kissing mustn't be the kissing of the, t of the lips where you, you chew someone's lips. Then that, should, that will make also makuru. And also another question which normally people they ask is, is it, I think that's all right. So inshallah tomorrow we'll get on with these kind of questions inshallah. Subhanallah bihamdi, subhanallah bihamdi. Astaghfirullah wa li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, I'll read inshallah Khatam Sharif and thereafter I'll ask. 14. Alright. 18, alright. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan wa jimis billahi rahman rahim. قل هو الله أحد الله صمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله صمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله صمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا قب ومن شر النفاذ في القد ومن شر حاسن إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ من رب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوصوص الخناس الذي وصف في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعون وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط دين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمنتقين الذين يقيمون الصلاة مما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون ما أنزلك ما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخر هم يكنون إن, إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا حبيبي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسمون وسلاما على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ثم صلى الله عليه وسلم يا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والله سبحانه وتعالى بليز اكسبت اور دعاز يا الله يا الله سبحانه وتعالى بيبا سيك يا الله ارفان دي ساي يا الله ارفان دي ساي ان ياسمين احمد فروم قطر ان فروم سارفيكا Brother Yasir, oh Brother Yasir, also is sick, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, please grant him shifa kami, Ya Allah. Inna Allahumma laikatahu salluna ala nabi. Ya ayuhal ladhiyya manu sallu alayhi sallim naslima. Allahumma salli ala sallim muhammadin. Wa ala sallim muhammadin wa barik wa sallim salatan wa salaman. Ala kihbi ya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzat amma isfun. Wa salamun al musalin. Wa alhamdulillah rabbil amin. Allahumma laka sumtu. Wa bika amantu. Wa alayka tawakaltu. وَعَلَىٰ رِزْكِكَ أَفْقَدُتُ فَتَكَبَّلْ مِنْ إِنْشَاءَ اللَّهِ We're going to break our fast and thereafter we have to proceed to the namaz insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum